Okay, now we are looking at something slightly different. So instead of plotting the actual numbers like here, right, instead of plotting the actual counts, what we would want to do in this particular example is to plot the proportions instead, right. So this would be let's say uh, 21,000 out of about 50,000 would be roughly 40 plus percent, right. So we want to plot only the proportions on the y-axis, not the counts, okay. Now plotting proportions is especially useful when you are looking at comparing distributions, okay. So for example, let's say you have two suppliers of diamonds or two sellers of diamonds and you want to compare their distributions of how much they sold of each type of cut. Okay. Now, the actual numbers don't matter very much. You want to see, okay, in terms of proportions, who's selling more, right? So in those cases, if numbers are given, it becomes difficult to compare. But if proportions are given, it becomes easy to compare, right? So many situations in which when we do bar plots, uh, we want proportions. In fact, we do that even for histograms. That's what we are trying to do here. So I'm just jumping ahead. Okay. So in order to get proportions, what you have to say is, x equals cut, whatever is the variable on which you're doing the bar chart, y equals dot dot prop dot dot. Okay, this is a special indication to the system that I want you to plot the proportions. Okay, and then within the aesthetic, just add group equals one. Okay, the reason being, if you looked at the transformed data that we saw earlier, you saw that there was a column called proportions in the transform data and all of those proportions were one. Okay, so basically what is happening is that the system will compute the proportions for uh, uh, for each of the values of cut based on the total numbers of that itself and all the proportions will come out as one. If you wanted to say to instead say look take it as a proportion of the total then you will have to say group equals one. Okay, so when you do this, you see the proportions and of course, as we thought, uh, ideal is coming out at roughly 40% and so on. Okay, so this is done quite often. So you need to understand how to do this to, to say y equals prop and also say group equals one. Okay, that becomes very important. So if you just did y equals prop and did not use group equals one, then as I had explained to you, what you will get? is basically this, right? So what it's doing is plotting each group as a proportion of its own group and then of course each one will be a hundred percent. So it's not useful. So that is of course uh, when you see this happening, if you miss the group equals one for that matter, if you see this happen then you know okay that's what happened so I know what to do. Just add a group equals one and that group equals one has to go inside aesthetic. Okay, so that's restored. The, the, the problem is solved. Okay, so adding group equals one overrides the default grouping behavior and uh, computes the proportions on the whole. Okay, so in general, whenever applicable, the default grouping is by the x variable. Okay, that's the default grouping. If you want to say, no, I don't want you to group by x variable, I want you to group by the whole thing, then you can say group equals one. Actually speaking, you could say group equals any constant value group equals one, group equals thousand, group equals open quote, close quote, any of those things will actually work. The moment you put any constant value for group, it'll work.